Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary, your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Ame J model, actress, social entrepreneur, and a bunch of other things. Um, Today, I'm here with Eugenia Washington. She is an amazing, amazing, amazing human being before anything else. I love her to death. And of course, we're going to get into her life and all that she's about. But first and foremost, you might you guys may know her from Cycle 7 of America's Next Top Model. She was Playmate of the Year 2016. And she's done an amazing, amazing job of just being an influencer in her own right with everything that she does, her personality, her her zeal, her confidence, which I just love. Like, you just can't teach that. So we're going to start off with that. Ma'am, how are you doing? (laughs) Hi. (laughs) Thank you for the introduction. You're welcome. How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And thank you for having me on your show. Um, I would just like to say that I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy to be the first episode. Um, Yes. Yes. This is really, really great. And I can't wait to see what this becomes because it's awesome. I am so grateful for you saying that. Oh, no. Yeah, it's perfect. I know what it takes. You know what I mean? Yes. The things that we have to get over to get here. And so I'm just like proud of you for doing that. So this is great. Thank you. We're going to have a good show. Amen. Yeah. You're feeling good these days. You're doing good. I am. I'm feeling good these days. Man, this era of quarantine. Yeah. I call this just just the relaxing air. Just relax. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been. Find yourself. Bro, it's been a hard year. Like, man, it's been a hard year. And just, gosh, we, we all know with the quarantine, the pandemic, and then the the, the riots. and <laughs> It's been a lot. It's been a lot. A lot has been happening. Yeah, just like spiritually and emotionally. Um, so this is this era of quarantine, since my birthday on October 8th, I told myself to just chill. Hello, Libra. Yes. 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 <laughs> chill and be whoever. The fuck? Do I can, can I cuss? I said fuck and then cuss. Ma'am, go ahead. <laughs> the fuck? I want to be. So, that, amen to that. Be yeah. whoever you want to be. Yeah. And that goes back to what I was saying about you is how much I love your confidence and like you just cannot teach that. So, where does that come from? Like, where did you find your confidence? Who made you? <laughs> Who made you? Like, how did you make yourself? Man. How did you become this confident, amazing person who's so just unrelentless <laughs> with honesty? Um, I don't know where I got it from. I just am. You know what I mean? And, and, and like the confidence thing, thank you so much because of course there, there, are to- there are lots of times where I don't feel confident and I don't feel good enough and I don't, you know, I don't feel good enough. That's, mm-hmm. every, that's all of us. Life. And I have that and I be feeling that, you know? Um, but... I guess my personality, well, I'm going to back up. My parents are both from Louisville, Georgia. My dad was. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. I, I knew it would have to, it would go there. It, it would it have to go, to go there. there. Just, like, where are you from? Where am I from? Yes. <laughs> Context. Jeez. I'd be thinking about how crazy my parents are. So <laughs> my parents are from Louisville, Georgia, which is a small town in Georgia in the middle of nowhere. And uh, my dad has always been a person who just fights for the rights of black people. Um, So he, just to give you context, my dad helped integrate their high school. Wow. Yeah. While he was in high school. That's amazing. So that's the type of stuff that he does. And um, true activist, true activist. Yes. Um, And then he met my mom and my mom comes from a family of teachers. The women are all teachers. 
And so that's where I guess the wisdom comes from because my mom was always teaching me something and then my dad was always preaching about something. So um, they always taught us just to be who you are. And my dad always said, he didn't teach me a lot, but the one thing he taught me was be a leader. That's what I heard him say, be a leader, be a leader, because it doesn't matter where you go in life. No one could steer you wrong if you're leading. And if you're leading somebody somewhere and it's wrong, then, you know, you can take responsibility and learn from it. But at this, but regardless, be, be a, a leader. leader. Yeah. And I grew up watching um, Malcolm X story, Eyes on the Prize, Roots, Vernon John story. Um, all of those movies that they used to make back in the 80s and 90s about like African-American culture and history and about slavery and um, civil rights. I grew up watching that time, cry freedom about apartheid. You know, mm-hmm. literally when I was, uh, gosh, five, six, those. seven, eight. Yeah. We were watching those. Right. So I grew up with a sense of pride in myself. Culture and knowing who you culture are. my culture and who I am. And also I have seven brothers and sisters. There's eight of us and we're all a year and a half, two years apart. And we're all very assertive and loud and tall and opinionated. So it's a robust family. It's a robust family. Yeah. And it's a robust, robust situation. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. You have seven other people that look just like you, sound like you, talk like you, and they're a year and a half apart. You have to separate yourself and you have to find, you have to find your individuality because we were always together. Right. We went, we did everything together. I literally have seven clones. Right. If you look at my How sisters did and brothers. you set yourself apart? How did you become your own individual in such a you had to just family. Well, think I had to fight. Right. You know, what I, number are you? I'm number four. Number so four. I'm the okay. Child as yeah, well. yeah. So yeah. you really had to fight yes. for, you know, you're not the youngest. You're not the oldest. Yes. You really have to fight for, for your way. My space. Yeah. I've yeah. always had to fight for my space in life. Mm-hmm. And when I got out into the world, it was the first time that I was away from my brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. You know, we go to the same school, we, we catch the same bus, we have to do all the same activities, we go to the same church, we're like with these people all the time. So when I got out into the world, I was like, let me be whoever I want to be. Like, I need to be loud and strong and whatever that is in the world I have to be because it's my first time in my life being by myself. So my upbringing, I don't know if I explained that well, but my upbringing helped me to have the confidence to be who I am because I've always been fighting for my identity. I love that so much. And like, that's, that's some real shit. Like that is real. real. You do have to go back and see where it began. Yeah. Like, and I feel like I just know you so much more. (laughs) That's the whole thing about this. Like we have to understand in order to really know somebody, like I have to know that about you, your yeah. family, where you come from, yeah. all of your circumstances, yeah. because that is all setting up the precedence to who you became. Yeah. So thank you for that. You're Amazing. Welcome. You're welcome. Amazing. And thanks for telling me your, your story too. Sis. Yeah. We're going to get into it. We've been learning a lot. So of course that informed your identity yeah. and your worldview. Yeah. And like, when did you feel like you found who you truly were, like, like what, what certain things happened that like jolted you, that changed your worldview, that, that showed you who you were? Cause that kind of formed your family mm-hmm. and your contact and those mm-hmm. things like mm-hmm. formed your identity. Mm-hmm. You fought for your space, but what like made you, you after Jeez. leaving home? What time, when did you leave home? I left home at 19. 19. So I've what prompted that? I've always been a little too much, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've always been a lot. Do you want to know the circumstance in which I moved out of my house? I want to know it all. <laughs> and what happened? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I moved out of my house at 19, right? Um, oh, God. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbacks? Flashbacks. So, because... You know, you're just moving through life and making choices based on what you want to do and who you are. And then you look back and you're like, "Whoa, that was crazy. Wow. I can't believe I did that. I roll with you thinking. Such a young age. Um, (laughs) What happened? Okay. (laughs) Y'all, Eugenia (laughs) packs me up. We know each other. So this is just, I'm I'm trying real hard to keep it professional. (laughs) But she literally cracks me up because she's just a a funny person. Thanks. Okay, so I was back in my hometown in Palmdale because I got kicked out of college. And what? I didn't even I got- know that. <laughs> How and why? 
<laughs> There's a lot to tackle here. Why did you get <laughs> nothing bad out? that I did? But I was trying to do bad stuff in college because it was. I went to Azusa Pacific University in California, and it was a strictly private, liberal, uh, Christian college with like five percent black people. And I was where was this? This was in Azusa. So this is in Azusa, California. California. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. It's LA County. I didn't even know. Off the two ten. Uh, <laughs> And so there had these strict rules. And um, again, it was 5% black. Um, and I was the only black cheerleader on there, uh, on the squad. You know, so everybody kind of knew me. And I was the only black girl. So I was like, let me just, let me just be loud then. Um, <laughs> let, me loud. let me just be loud then. But no, we kept trying to get in trouble uh, via campus safety because we had nothing else to do. But no, I didn't get kicked out of college because of that. I got okay. kicked out of college because we couldn't afford it. Oh. Honestly, I was late on my FAFSA, turning okay. in my FAFSA. Gotcha. I've always been a procrastinator. <laughs> That's Libra yeah, lifestyle. So Might not make it, sis. <laughs> you see, you the see. Fuck? I Can get you. you. I get up? it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so FAFSA was turned in late, yeah, which sorry. led to. No one taught me how to do it. Okay, I had to figure it's, this it's out for process. myself. It's a process. It's a whole process. I, had to I hope it out the process is easier now for kids going to college because I almost didn't go back to school for that same reason. Right? Like I was a thousand dollars behind, Bro. and I almost didn't go back to school. Had my ex's family not helped me out, so I feel that FAFSA is no joke. So, and I was I was one of the oldest in my family. We have big guys and little guys, mm-hmm. and I was uh, the second oldest girl. So basically, I had to figure out life and then teach my younger okay, brothers yeah, and sisters. Pass it on. Yeah, so I didn't know anything about FAFSA, so I'm filling it out wrong, and then I just didn't even turn it in. And so, like you, I was five thousand dollars short, mm-hmm. and they were literally like, "Have it on Friday." Mm-hmm. And my mom went and asked from where, from where. But my mom went and asked all my family in Georgia. She got the money, but she got it on Monday, and they're like, oh. "We're sorry, Gina." It's a little too late. No, we're like what? No way. Yeah, so they kicked America, me out. America, we got to do better. America, it's a scam. But, but that's, that's another okay. conversation. That's okay. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say I damaged the school before I left. <laughs> <laughs> but so there was this pond, and I was so mad that they were kicking me out over some dumb shit. So I worked in the cafeteria, so I could just walk in and out of the cafeteria when I felt like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there was just like small man-made pond that. It specifically said, do not swim in. It was like two feet deep. Okay. Do not swim in. Do not throw things in. Do not feed the little duckies. So I was like, fuck this pond. So I go. <laughs> fuck this pond. For real. Fuck this. You little, you, you little, their prized little pond. Like this little pond, it was like 15 feet round. It was like the prized possession of Azusa Pacific. Like, fuck your pond. So <laughs> I went into the cafeteria and I pulled out two big old family size Quaker oat boxes. Do that shit in the pond. No, Jumped you did in the pond, not. went swimming around no, in that you bitch. Did not. Took care of showed up in that. <laughs> oh, they had to pull me out. Dead. Clogged the no. whole shit up. They had to drain it <laughs> and refill it. Fuck you guys in school. Yo, okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> I would have never thought to do that. That's my, that was the only, only thing. I, that was the only thing I thought to do. I had. I was like, there, this is what I should do to them. <laughs> yeah, clog that shit up. You Fuck you what? guys. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I couldn't think. Of, it. I couldn't think of nothing else to do but that. <laughs> I'm actually not mad at that. That's you know? what's up. So that happened. Okay. You you kick <laughs> you you said fuck your pond, m- made it all fucked up yeah. with oatmeal. Okay. They had to drain it. Yeah. Went about your way, and then. What prompted you to, is that what so, prompted you to leave your house? So I had to go and move back to Palmdale, California. Okay. Which you I, had to go back home. It fell into a little depression. Mm. Who the hell wants to go back home? Right, right. Anyway, so I had to go to community college, which was stupid. And then I ended up getting a job at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> it's my first job. Wow. And then, um, so then I had to live back with my mom and stuff. So whatever, 19. <sighs> my mom got this boyfriend that... I didn't like, we all didn't like. Mm -hmm. Um, He came into our life trying to be the savior of the family, Mm -hmm. you know, be the father figure to this woman, this poor woman with her seven feral children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was trying to be super strict with us, Mm -hmm. but we weren't raised that way because 
uh, we raised ourselves and there was a specific order. Big families have a specific order, you know, because the mom and dad can't take care of everything. So the kids have a big responsibility growing up because we have to take care of each other. So he didn't recognize, he didn't understand that, why we were so outspoken, why we came and go as we please, why we, you know? So he wanted to- And almost look down on it? He looked down on it. Like my mom needed help taming these children. And we were like, we don't be tamed. Right. So, and, and me? Mm. Absolutely not going to be tamed. Mm. So uh, me and him got into it all the time. Like, if, if you want to fight, nigga, let's go. So every day it was something, you know. He was upset that I would come home late. Mm-hmm. He even built a fence in front of our yard. Mm. So I w- if I came back after 10 o'clock, he was going to lock me out the oh, fence. No. So fuck you. I would just stay at my boyfriend's house. You know what I mean? So you're messing up. This is counterproductive. Right. I'll exactly. come back in the morning exactly. feeling better. You know what I mean? You're not going to stop me yeah, <laughs> so, living from living. Okay. Okay. So anyway, she was going to move in with him. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was like, if he's giving me hell at my house, mm-hmm. I know he's going to give me hell at his house. Oh, so yeah. what I won't do is move in with him. And my mom was like, well, you either come with us or you find your own way. So I was like, well, shit, I'm finding my own way. Mm-hmm. And so my boyfriend asked his mom if I could move in with him. And then I moved in with him. And that's how I left the house at 19. Wow. That is, yeah, quite a turn. Yeah. So you left school because of those circumstances, um, <laughs> clogged up their pond. Fucked their pond. Ended up having to leave, mm-hmm. just leave home because you weren't finna follow your mom into yeah. potentially stepdad. Did they ever get married? Or? Just some abusive shit. Like, get out. Okay. Don't come. Do not come into my life. It wasn't a good situation. It wasn't a good situation. Okay. For I didn't know either. this man. Why are you giving me lectures on right. my life? I right. just met you. You didn't even know me. Mm. And then how was the relationship with the boyfriend at the time that you moved in with? What was that oh. like? <laughs> and what did that teach it you? Was, what did it lead to? Because no. relationships are always a, like such a cornerstone of our like self-development. It can teach you so much both bad and good, right? Mm -hmm. It can teach you so much. And I always find it that once you break up, like it it can really make or break you a relationship. So what did this relationship teach you or lead to at that time? And you were 19? Yeah, I was 19. (laughs) So it was bullshit. This relationship was bullshit. Yikes. Um, But I didn't know that. Mm. Um, And you're young. And I'm young, I'm 19. Star-crossed love. Yeah, so it's one of those things to where we were best friends. Like, you're with them every single day and night. And it's like, oh, I wish I could wake up to you. Oh, my gosh, you know. Um, And so I moved in with him. And as soon as I moved in with him, a week later, like, things changed. Mm -hmm. Like, it just became, he started ignoring me. Like, he would come home from work and just ignore me, not talk to me the whole night until the next morning. Mm -hmm. And I I would, didn't understand that because we were just best friends, you know. So when did you start? not liking me. Um, the heck was that about? Yeah. And so just, and then, um, and because that was going on, I felt betrayed because I moved here. I'm in your mom's house um, because you wanted me to be here and you know my circumstance mm-hmm. and I don't want to go back home. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely can't go back home now because I just made a big old ruckus before I left. Right. So why would you treat me like this now? And why are you treating me like this now? So um, that was a very, man, um, what would I say about that time? It was just, it was the start of feeling uh, helpless in my own life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes we have those situations in our life where you're just like, wow, how did I get into this situation? Yeah. And me being a strong person and and not in control of everything, but I'm making my decisions based on what I feel is best for me. And that decision didn't work out. And now I'm, I am under the, I'm, I'm at the mercy of this man who is different. Right. And I don't have any control over that. So that was tough. But at the same time, he was still my best friend. And so we'd have hard times and we have good times and hard times and good times. A toxic relationship, toxic. a toxic relationship. Um, and but so I stayed with him because um, that was my option. And I didn't have another way out. 
And again, we had really great times when they were great. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that this was bad. So I was just like, okay, I'm in this thing now. And that's one thing about relationships that are like, I wish young women and all women in general would understand is that like, what we've grown up seeing sometimes is so, I mean, it, it sticks to you. Yeah. You don't realize how much it affects us and how we view love. Mm-hmm. And like, if you grew up seeing your mom and dad argue all the time and there's just strife and pain and yelling at each other and hitting each other even or whatever you saw. And then when they are, when there are good times, it's amazing. They're happy. They're laughing. The whole family. And you love those moments. Yeah. But when they're arguing, it's just, you know, and yeah. I, I had a, I had that. You know yeah. what I mean? I had that. So it's just, you might equate seeing that as, oh, and then we always hear in cliche sayings, love is pain, love is pain. Right. So you start to believe that, oh, love is pain. I have to endure this in, lo- in order to enjoy love. Right. I have to endure this in order to feel love or or just, this is what love is this is what love is this is what i've been taught and we see it in the movies girls acting all types of crazy mm-hmm. for a man chasing him like you know what i'm saying and just like accepting mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. from a man and and also this idea of being a woman and thinking that and also being taught that being a woman, being a good woman, means putting up with a right. man's bullshit. Right, that's not and it. And outside of everything, cooking, cleaning, um, going where he tells you to go, letting him lead and be the man. Um, and so you're thinking, for me, it was just like, for me, it made me feel like, It made me not like being a woman because I was like, wow, I'm born having to have all of this burden on me. So you start resenting your womanhood. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, because I was like, I'm not even this type of person to be following these societal rules for these women. And my parents are from the South. So, you know, understand that as well. Like, um, the woman was always the fall guy for the black man. Mm. The black Mm. woman was always Mm. the fall guy for the black man. You know, he Mm. goes out into the world and he has to be uh, the tap dancer for the white man. And so he loses his masculinity and his manhood because he has this smiling grin in their face all day. So he comes home and he has to find something to conquer. And it's usually his wife. He has to find something to conquer once he comes home after a day. Can you imagine a society where where a black man has to go out, be emasculated every single day, being called nigger, 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 nigger. You're inferior. You're this, you're this, you're this. You're nothing. You're nothing. Mm -hmm. And then to have to come home. And who do you put that pain on? Who do you Mm -hmm. then project that Mm -hmm. shit on? Mm Mm-hmm. The fall guy, like you said, the woman. So I totally get that. That is, that's insane. But it's so true. And then in turn, it makes us a part of, it makes that a part of a woman's identity. Right. You know, the fall guy. Taking that shit on and making it okay. Mm -hmm. That's what you're here for. I'm a pillow. Exactly. I'm not a pillow. Because you know what? We are... In the cotton fields with y'all. Right. We're right. getting called nigger, nigger. We have to sit here and, that part. Um, you know, we have to do the same monkey dance. But we come to you for love. That part. Mm-hmm. And then you come to us for domination. So in this, I'm not speaking in general. I'm right. speaking of what I saw in my family. Right. Um, not even just with my parents, but with my extended family as well. But it's, it's Coming a pattern. from where we come from. Right. Yeah. So that's what I saw. And, but that's not the person I am. Like, don't come into my life on some, you know, tell me what to do type shit. Because I'm not that, as a human being, I'm not that type of person. So I felt so conflicted with myself. Like, how am I this type of person who is, um, I'm a leader. Mm -hmm. And then I have to be. um, Just passive. Passive. I have to be. Doormat. I have to be a doormat, right? Right, as a woman, mm-hmm. but as a person, I'm a leader. But as a woman, I'm a doormat. That, so that was confusing. Happens a lot. I feel like I've seen a lot of uh, women, strong women, outspoken mm-hmm. women. I was actually watching Real Housewives of Atlanta the mm-hmm. other day, and I saw Kenya. Mm-hmm. 
prime example of what I was saying. She even said herself how like she's become so passive in her relationship mm-hmm. with her new husband. And um, I see that a lot with a lot of women. Yeah. Strong, outspoken, you know, just leader mm-hmm. type of woman. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the man, they they get all of a sudden, you know, yeah. demure. They're they're passive. They're they're becoming a doormat yeah. for the abuse and and taking it as, oh, but I need to soften up. And that's not yeah, that's not softening up because in my relationship, I feel the same way sometimes where I feel like I have to, you know, mm-hmm. be more passive. I need to be more soft or he might leave me. I've, I've gotten that from other mm-hmm. past boyfriends where it's like, you're too this or you're too that. I'm too, and I'm just like, do you want me to just sit here and take this shit? Do you not want me to speak my mind? Yeah. And if you want that woman, then I'm not it. Not even. So bye. Yeah. Yes. And I find that. So I, I'm like in, in relationships after those really, uh, those incidents, mm-hmm. we'll call it incidents. Mm-hmm. I found myself trying to like, what would a feminine woman do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm really having to ask myself that. Yeah. And you know what I see in you that I see in myself is a lot of that masculine energy. Yeah. And, and it's not a bad way. It's just it's um, not a bad thing. Man, I see the world in HD. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I know what I'm talking about. I know what I've seen. I know right. my experiences and I know what my lessons were. Right. So I, it's impossible to have somebody coming into my life trying to sell me a dream when I know what reality is. You have to have somebody who, um, who's not trying to win. Mm-hmm. No, let me not say that. I'm not going to say that. You have, if, if you want a passive woman, you have to find somebody who's okay with that. And you can't make... You can't make a woman, you can't train a woman to be passive. I had a boyfriend who was like, you know, and then I get a woman and I, I start molding her and like what making the her hell? be. I'm like, what? Do I look like a puppy? Girl, he asked me to fix his plate one time and I I was puzzled. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was puzzled. Girl, he stopped me in my track. I was like, <laughs> flabbergasted. <laughs> I was, but he was caught himself trying to mold me into that woman and we had these. Oh, hell no. It was just like. I was already raised. I already have a mom. Yeah, yeah. She taught me what she taught me. So you can't come and teach me something different than what, about being a woman that my mom taught me. Now, I have no problem letting my man lead because right. I, um, I'm i also very feminine. I'm, yeah. I'm also very sensitive. And I love men. You of know course, what I mean? I love course. men for men's men. Yes. You know? You want a strong I leader. I love men. Tight. Yes. Of course. And But the, I think the distinction comes in... Mm, you have to earn it and you have to make me want to submit to you. You have to show me and that I think it's that's safe. beautiful. Thank you. You have to show me that it's safe that to submit part. to you because I'm, I'm out here by myself doing it. That's it. So I need to know that, that if it's safe, safe yeah. to submit and that you're going to gonna you. protect me. Man. And that I don't have to keep these walls up and c- put my guard up that I've had to have my whole life in order to protect yeah. myself because nobody was protecting me. Right. So how can I feel safe around you? What are you doing to make me feel safe around you where I can let my walls down, where I can be that so-called yeah. quote unquote submissive yeah. woman that you sometimes want? Right, and it shows in the decisions that you make as a man. It shows in what you've accomplished and achieved. It shows in the things that you say. It shows in your relationships, what type of man you are. And if I'm able to trust you, mm-hmm. you know, I can't trust a man who, um, Man, I can't trust a man who doesn't, who, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, to articulate, yeah, I'm, yeah, trying yeah, articulate. I'm trying to articulate. It's a lot. It's a lot to unpack. Oh, okay. For example, uh-huh. example, I was just dating this guy mm-hmm. and he was inconsistent with just talking to me on the phone. Mm-hmm. And so... For me, that lets me know that he doesn't know what he wants. Or if he does know what he wants, he's not uh, assertive enough to get it. Mm. Or if you don't want me, you don't want me and stop playing games. That part. So either Just way, you look bad. Because I'll say, if there's a man that I'm not interested in, I'll say that. I'll say, you know what? I think that you're great, but I don't feel that this is going anywhere. And I just want you to know so I won't. So this won't lead into anything def- different. Because I know what I want and I know what I don't want. And you're honest enough to let the person know 
Right. Ask to not waste time. Right. Take notes, people. Right. So if you're being inconsistent with even just answering your phone and then you're giving excuses and I'm telling you how you how I feel and you're you're defending yourself instead of saying, you know, I actually feel this way. I wasn't trying to make you feel this. I wasn't trying to. I'm sorry. Then I can't even trust you as a man because you can't even get the basics right. Mm. Right. So you're not a man that I would allow to leave me. I wouldn't, I, you're not a man that I would allow to let me lead, mm. or I'm sorry, to, to let lead, lead me. me. Yeah, yeah. Because you're leading us into death and destruction mm. with this phone call. Mm. Mm. You can't even articulate how you feel or express how you feel. How can I trust you to lead me? Right. Where are we going? That is number one. That is, honestly, that's such a, uh, that's a real thing. Like you just opened my mind a little bit. That is so true. I gotta be able to trust you. Yeah. And I can't and even trust you with, with this that, communication. That, number one. Yeah. Mm. So, so uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's some real shit. So with uh, the first relationship taught you a lot. Oh, okay, this relationship lasted for seven years. Did it? It lasted for seven years. I was 19, 19 through 26. Wow. And that was the most toxic, destructive relationship that I've ever experienced in my life. Okay. Outside of the one with my parents. What made it so toxic? Um, this man hated me. Mm, why would you say that? Because he was jealous of me. Mm, how could a man be jealous of a woman? Explain. What um, happened there? Because that is weird, but it happens. I've all, heard. All the time. It happens. Yeah. All the time. When, when their egos are just bruised because of your success or your because of personality. Because I'm alive. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. When um, people have their own traumas that they haven't dealt with. Right. And you know what? Men. No. I'm not going to. I don't want to generalize in this situation. Right. right. But um, in my experience, this man had whatever traumas he had and insecurities as a man he had. And he wanted to use me, a strong woman, to fix that for him, to put on all his insecurities on me. And if I didn't change, you know, like he wanted me to change to make him feel good about himself. Now, um, because I am, I hate saying outspoken, because I speak my mind, mm -hmm. because I'm opinionated, because I'm driven, because I have, um, big, bold ideas. And I've always knew what I wanted to be when I was younger, when we were with, when we were together mm -hmm. and I was not afraid to go after them. He hated that. Mm -hmm. He hated that mm -hmm. because he was afraid to go after what he wanted. So, um, he just tried, of course he went along with it. Uh, he, I mean, we lived together for seven years. We were together. He went everywhere I went mm -hmm. because you know, he still wanted a piece of that. Mm -hmm. And not only he wanted a piece of that, but he wanted to make sure that I didn't get as far as I wanted to go. That is so weird. Isn't it? So, I mean, it was just a bunch of emotional abuse. Yeah. You know, he's always mad about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do no right. I, didn't, I couldn't do any right. Everything I was doing was bothering him. You know, he would just wake up in the morning and just be mad and not talk to me and just wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the day because that's just how he felt. Um, we argued all of the time over something small all of the time. Um, he always thought I was cheating on him. I was cheating on him with some light-skinned dude. I don't know who this dude is to this day. Oh my God. But yeah, he was dark-skinned, so I'm cheating on him with a light-skinned right. dude. Uh, <laughs> I was like, who just is? put all your insecurities yeah, on me, all, why don't you? All on me, uh, why don't you? Okay. You know what I mean? Um, so, and, but I didn't know that was wrong. Right, right. I didn't know that was wrong. What, what made you stay? Because. So long. I was young, number one. And you didn't know. I did not know that it was wrong, number two. I've always complained about him to my friends, but my friends were going through the same thing. And we're a bunch of young black girls in our early 20s trying to figure this life out. I mean, what, what advice is a girl that's my friend whose mom has also been in bad relationships right, and she right. doesn't what, know what, advice are what is she going to give, give me? Mm -hmm. She's going to help me navigate it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right, but not necessarily leave it. But not say, that's not good. That's not love. You don't deserve that. He doesn't love you like, he doesn't right. love you. Right. You know, you should leave. You don't deserve that. 
What made you finally say, I not doing this anymore at 26? Um, I turned 26. Actually, 25 is when I figured out I wasn't doing this, but it took to 26 for me to actually leave because I made a plan. But I turned 25 and I had a big old birthday party and everything. And then I was like, wait a minute. I spent my whole early 20s in this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Do I want to spend the second half of my 20s in this bullshit? Okay. Big no. revelation at 25. Big revelation. I was like, I'm mid-20s here. Right. This man is not stopping. Right. It's actually getting worse. Right. How long do I want to do this? Um, and it just got to a point to where it turned physically abusive because he just couldn't stop me. You know yeah. what I mean? He could not stop me. So he was like, let me just put hands on her. Let me try to stop her that way. Um, and then I remember... This is this is this was the turning point. Um, we had an argument one night, or one day, and this is how the argument started. I was sitting on the couch watching TV, waiting to go to a show. I had a job that evening, and I felt his eyes burning a hole in the back of my head from the dining room table. I felt it. And I was like, this nigga right here. Mm -hmm. Turned over, shown up, seen him looking at me with disdain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he was mad. Girl, I don't know what the hell this nigga was thinking. So I was like, what? What? He goes, tell me something. I'm going to ask you a question and don't lie to me. And I said, okay. He's like, no, because you always lie. And I'm asking you this one time, do not lie to me. I said, okay, because at this point I'm a liar, so it's fine. Right. Okay, to ask me the question, he said, if we weren't together and you saw me down the street, you wouldn't be checking for me. Tell me the truth. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, so you know. <laughs> but but it was it was it was like we lived together. We've been together for seven years. Why are you having this conversation with me? Mm. If we weren't together. Mm -hmm. And I saw you in the street, I wouldn't be checking for you. And this is the conversation you want to have and tell me don't lie. We are together. Right? Huh? On my birthday? Your birthday? No, it wasn't my birthday. Okay. I had a job. But I was like, we are, we are in the same house together. Okay. What kind of shit is this? This is, what kind of shit is this? And like my mind was blown and he was literally trying to have a conversation with me, like argument. And it turned into this three hour argument. And I was like, this shit is crazy. So I went to Ralph's, which is my favorite grocery store. And I go to the grocery store and I need to calm down because I like the grocery store. And I'm walking and I get me like some fruit roll-ups because I used to love those. And um, I'm in the checkout line and this woman comes and she touches me and she, she says, um, I have something important to tell you. And I was like, what? She said, um, God has a lot for you. You have a lot of good things coming to you, but the man that you're with doesn't want the best for you. So you need to run far, far away. Wow. Amen. I just got chills. That's exactly what happened. Stranger. Stranger. She was a short Mexican lady. Wow. She's like, I have to tell you something. Anointed. God will send anyone to you to send a message. Okay. Yeah. God, look at God. So sent this woman to tell you, you didn't know her from nowhere. No, Ralph, she stopped me in the checkout line. I was in Gave you this Hollywood. message that changed your life, the yeah, course of your life. Because no one has told me that it was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Not even my mom. And she knew what was going on. Not even my family. Not even my best friend. No one told me that this was wrong. No one said, get out of this. And I felt it in my body. And I was like, God. And I, was, I remember praying like, God. I don't know how to get out of this. I know this is wrong. I know this is wrong. I know this is wrong, but I just don't know you, what you to do. You just hadn't seen what else is there yeah, is, right? I was just so. like, this is just, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And this woman said, God has a lot for you. You have a lot of good things coming to you, but the man that you're with does not want the best for you and you need to run far away. And I was like, oh, that's the answer. Ding, 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 ding. That's the answer. That's, he doesn't want the best for me. And you knew this. You felt it in your spirit. Yeah. yeah. But you got to have somebody tell you. You do. You do. So the next day I went to my agency and I told my agent, I need to go somewhere far. I was like, I need to go somewhere far. This was September. And I said, the farthest I can go to work and stay for three months. And he was like, well, South Africa, you can go there. And I say, yes. 
I'm going. Yeah. So he's like, but you have to wait six months because this was September. And he's like, season doesn't start till February. So he's like, but we'll go in February. So I'm like, perfect. So um, September through February, I just laid low and just just got through those months. And then when it was time for me to leave and our lease was up in February, too. So I told him two weeks prior, because I know if I would have gave him a heads up, then it would have made my life hell. Mm. So I told him two weeks prior, I said, I'm moving out. We're not really, we're not renewing our lease and I'm going to South Africa and that's it. Right. Amazing. So then I left. But best, best believe. Amazing. Yeah, I, Amazing. I left. Yeah, I left and that was it. So and you I said, just started my life. I'm going to the farthest. The farthest. <laughs> point of earth from... Palmdale at the time? I was in North Hollywood at the time. North Hollywood. Okay, yeah, so you I had come. Modeling. Okay, you had come to LA. You were modeling already. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was like three years in already. Okay, mm-hmm. and then you said, I'm just going. Yeah. Amazing. Fuck all of that. Amazing. And it wasn't even hard. It was just, I just needed somebody to guide me. Right, you know, right. I'm literally early 20s and I'm out here. I have a new career that I created for myself and I'm trying to navigate. I'm in a new city in LA that I moved myself out to, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm paying for everything. Um, I'm in Being this relationship. Like I'm really doing it out right, here right. on my own, me and God, mm-hmm. you know? So, but with that, I didn't, ha- I didn't have any guidance. Right. And so for this woman to tell me and give me the real and say, you can leave. You and can actually, leave. yeah. Look at that. Yeah. How freeing. You can. You can leave. leave. No matter what you are going through, mm-hmm. no matter what is happening, you can leave. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, it's shit. like, yeah. Your spirit needed permission. Yeah. For something that you knew you had to do. Mm-hmm. But thank God it happened. Yeah. And I just want to take it back. So you said you were modeling for. You had been modeling for the past three years at the time mm-hmm. before you decided to go to Cape Town. So like, how did you get into modeling? Oh, top model. Because now we know you are. I went on America's who you Next are. Top Model. When did that happen? That was 2005. Um. And you were how old at the time when it happened? I was 20. I was either was I 20 or 21? <gasps> I might have been 21. How'd you get on the show? So you you left Palmdale already. Yeah. How'd you get on the show? I didn't leave Palmdale already. Oh, you were still in Palmdale when yeah. it happened. Okay, okay. I went take me from. take me through that. Um how do I get on top model? <laughs> Talking my shit once again. <laughs> that's how I got on. So that's how I got on. Talking my shit once again. <laughs> Girl, Lord. So I went to open calls, right? Okay. And as you know, they were putting 50 girls, there was 2,000 girls there that day. Yeah. They took 50 each into a sound stage. We had the CBS Sound, sound Studios in, Culver, in Studio City. Okay. They took 50 of us each and they put us in a soundstage and they told us to line up single file. And they just went down the line with a camera and said, state your name, your age, and where you're from. And so I was like, hi, I'm Gina Washington. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Pontiac, California. <laughs> All the way you say it, ladies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> and then they were like, well, if we say your name, um, stay. If we don't, leave. So they called 10 of us. I was there. And then they said... Okay, guys, they lined us up and they said, tell us a story. And <laughs> that's perfect. You done got your job from talking your shit. Talking my shit. I know that's right. Yeah, tell us a story. Mm-hmm. So I was 19. I didn't really have a story to tell, but I did. I was like, shit, what's, what story do I tell? So, I, so my one semester at Azusa Pacific, there was this girl named Casey Luna. Casey, wait, Casey <laughs> Luna. I, I, you do not know that you got me on Top Model, but you did. So, <laughs> well, yeah, you got me out, halfway Casey. there. Halfway there, and then my dad got me the rest of the way. So, Casey is from Lindsay, California, which is Central California. There's nothing out there but orange groves and, d- and dirt. In <laughs> little, small, little towns with a bunch of people in there who don't do nothing but like drink and hang out. So she used to tell us about these times where they would have these bonfires um, in the middle of the orange grove, and drinking and stuff. And we were like 17, 18. So she was like, 
We had a bonfire one time in the Orange Grove. The Orange Grove caught on fire. We pour all the Smirnoff that we were drinking on the fire. The fire got bigger and then the uh, fire department had to come and put the Orange Grove out. And it was this crazy thing. So I just told them that story. I was like, so I was in the... <laughs> what? Yeah. I was like, so I'm from Palmdale and we have these peach groves. And one night we went drinking in the middle of the peach grove. We started a bonfire and we caught the peaches on fire. <laughs> it's a story. It's a story. Child, and we've you know anything about reality TV, they love a story. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Yep. And of course, your personality, I'm sure, lit that story up. And they're just like, that girl, we need her. her. Okay. It was a, it was an erroneous story. It was right. like we lit the orange grove on fire and then the fire truck had to come and, and, and put it out. So then they're like, you could stay. So <laughs> <laughs> you could stay. <laughs> so then they called, I think, four of us from that group of 10. And then they said, come back the next day. Uh, come back the next day. You're going to be here for eight hours. Come back the next day. So I'm like, cool. Came back the next day. And there was 50 of us out of 2,000. Wow. And we all sat in this conference room. And there was a row of chairs on one side, a row of chairs on the other side, a panel in the front of the room, and one chair and a camera in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And we walked in. And something told me, sit in the back. Mm -hmm. Sit in the back seat Duh. of this whole room. Just sit in the back. So I was like, cool. Mm -hmm. And we all sat down and the producers were saying, okay, girls, you're gonna go single file, sit in the middle of this room and talk to Tyra. Oh. And I was like, okay. And they started on the other side of the room from me. So every girl went down the line, she sat in the middle of the room and she talked to Tyra. They said about anything, just tell her something. Mm -hmm. So girls were talking about how they had such a hard time in high school, they were picked on. You know, this one girl was like, I hate my complexion I'm dark skin I hate being dark skin one girl was like <laughs> one girl said her mom died another girl was like I'm homeless and I'm over here like I don't have any of these stories you don't want to repeat the peach I mean everybody's doing the same shit and then and then it got to a point where girls just started dancing and just like, whatever this is Show out of control. Off. yeah yeah and stupid at the same time so I'm sitting in the back judging and just talking my shit and laughing at the girls. <laughs> eh, whatever. She said judging. I was judging because yeah. I was like, this is, yeah. this is stupid. That's, that's, yeah, no, that's what happened. It gets desperate. That's the type of thing I am. So <laughs> I sat in the, when it was my turn, I was the last girl to go. So I saw everybody. I was the last girl. Good. So I saw everybody. So I sat in the middle of the room and I was like, what the hell am I going to tell Tyra? So I told her this story. And this is a true story. No, mind you. Mind what I told you about where I come from and who my daddy is and my mommy is and what they taught us. So here's the story I told. I said, there was one time where I was going to a go, I was going to an agency to try to um, get signed to be a model. And I was in Beverly Hills and um, Beverly Hills was like an hour, an hour from Palmdale. So I said, I went, I went to my go see and I came back to my car and I realized that I locked my keys in my car. And I was in the middle of Beverly Hills. I locked my keys in my car, my cell phone in my car, so I could not get in my car. So I'm a black girl standing outside in the afternoon. Um, I couldn't get in my car. So um, for hours, for hours a, a white man would come by, and he started a conversation with me, asked me out. And then I said, well, I'm locked out of my car. Can you help me in my car? And he's like, no, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's yours or not. Yeah, so everybody came up to me to ask me and talk to me. There was about four, pe four white people that came up to me to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But when I told them, when I asked them for help to get me in my car, they were like, no, we're not sure. We can't help you. I'm sorry. No, I can't help you. They would come up to you and talk to you. But when you asked for help, no. No, they turned away. Everybody turned away. I was out there for four hours. It started getting dark. Wow. The one thing that saved me was there was a space that became available in front of my space. I was on a meter. And then I saw this champagne color Yukon Denali pull right in in front of me, bumping loud music. And I say, yes, they're black people. Oh. And I was like, I'm out, finally, these are black oh, people. Black yes. people, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. Yes, black people. Oh. And then it was these um, three dudes that came out and I was like, you guys, I locked my keys in my car, can you please help me? And they were like, yeah, sure. They popped the trunk, they had one of them, they had a, um, they had a tool yeah. that, that pops yeah. the window and helps you get in. Yeah. Pop the window, let me in my car, and was like, there you go, two and a half minutes. Wow. I was like, thank you guys so much, you have no idea I was out here, none of these white people will help me. 
And I was just out here and, you know, thank you so much. They were like, yeah, no problem. Of course. Da, da, da. Drove home. Right. And, yeah. and then I said, not a week later, I was in the grocery store and there was a white woman in front of me and she had all these groceries for her kids. And I could see that. And she was five dollars short. And I was behind her and I could have gave her five dollars for my pocketbook. But I wasn't about to open my pocketbook for this white lady because I know that if she saw me outside of my car, she wouldn't have she wouldn't have let me in. So what how am I how crazy am I gonna look to help this white lady have food for her kids when she wouldn't even help me get home? So I watched this lady put her groceries back and whimper to the cashier because I was not about to help. And then I said some shit to close it out like uh and that's the problem with America right now America is racist and you know and we as black people need to and that's the problem I have and then that was it bam so you're on the show yeah and then the producers and everybody was like oh my uh, god <laughs> <laughs> they like they didn't know she was about to turn up like that I mean wait but in your story though I just want to bring up the point like yo that is so crazy because like there's a comfort that you that we get when we see other mm -hmm. black people mm -hmm. and like that's just uh why did the why, white, did we, why why did the white people think that i was trying to break into right. my own you can car. just help this girl out like there i'm sure you you i i totally understand that i totally get it you never know sure but yeah they could have asked you real questions to make sure that this was your car this man, this white, old white man came by, had a 20 minute conversation, asked me to dinner. But you can't help me but out. You, you could have helped me call it AAA. You could have called, you could have done something else to, to help me out. Right. right. Without breaking out a, a you know, a freaking yeah. saw to open the door. You, there's something they could have done, but, but they didn't want to help. Because he said he can't confirm that that's not my car and he doesn't want to help someone get it, uh, break in the car. Wow. This wasn't no Mercedes. Right. This was a 2001 Buick Skylock. So who the fuck is trying to break into that? You could have helped me. You could have helped me some some way. Some none of these white people helped. But and so I didn't help this white lady in turn. And I had and I was like and I had I felt good watching her put her her groceries away. Oh no, my god. She couldn't feed her kids. It was five dollars. I had five dollars. But you think I was about to go in my pocket bank and this? I didn't. Hell no. <laughs> so I got on the show. No, I went to um, prelims and then prelims. I was talking my shit again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same shit. So Tyra was like, blown it back. Yeah. Okay, you're on the show. And I'm on the show. Amen. <laughs> and then how was that experience for you? The show wasn't shit. I mean, listen. Um, I. Not to not put this on, but to say, because we know how the show went and we know that, uh, okay, the this, this show, okay, fine. I'll sum it up. But I did talk about this on another podcast. Um, the show for me was, the show sucked. It was just creating a TV show. Um, it was nice to have that experience, but the politics of creating the TV show, the fact, the way that Tyra portrayed me, the way that Tyra was trying to humble me and make me feel bad about myself and make me insecure. The, the what ways? Tyra, if you wanna. Tyra, Tyra's thing was to try to humble me because I came in how I came in. I came in swinging, right, right. but that's just because that's who I am. Right, that's who you are, and that's you're about who to I tame am. it for you anybody. Who the fuck are you to tame me? I was already raised as is. You ain't shit. You just a model mm. on some real shit. Mm. So you don't have no authority over my life to 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 make me unlearn the thing, the powers that were instilled in me. Just because you don't fucking feel them for yourself. Mm. So I was mad the whole time because I was like, how this bitch gonna come up? I looked up to you. Okay, fine. I'm talking shit. I looked up to you. And how are you going to take it upon yourself as a black woman, right. knowing the struggles that you faced, knowing the, the struggles that you face right. in this industry? Right. And you call yourself trying to create a show to um, give voice to the voiceless right. and create diversity and be, uh, what the fuck did this bitch say? A beauty, a beauty, uh, it was something dumb. I can't remember. Beauty, beauty. A beauty pioneer, you know, to show people that black women are beautiful and, you know, other races are beautiful and shit. And as soon as we got on a show, you want to, you want to make us feel like we ain't shit. Tyra trying to make me feel like I wasn't shit. And I was 21 what, what years old. What kind of things was she saying? So Tyra was like, Eugenia, you need to humble yourself. It was literally, Eugenia, you're whack. You need to humble yourself. Just and straight I, up. Straight up. And I know, I, here's the thing. I came in, like, I like... I get that. I, listen, yeah. I came in because the producer said, 
This is a TV show. Whoever you are, you got to be that times 10. Right. And I said, well, okay. I know who I am. And I'm going to be that, that times, times 10. 10. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, hey, be dark skin. Because I don't. I'm not going to sit here and get no sob story because I don't got one. But what I do have is a power story. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do that. That's me. Snaps, y'all. Snaps. Honestly, that's me. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be like, my dad was abusive. Fuck all of that. Like, this is about me. You know what I mean? Mm, I can totally see where, like... That comes from. And and I'm really surprised that that was your experience with Tyra because I can like, but I see it and I don't, I believe it. She didn't do that to because me though. She didn't do that to me. But that's also because I guess I did have a stop story. So it was easy to be like, oh, pat on the head. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they want. Mm-hmm. So when you, a person who is just, you speak your mind, you are who you are, you know who you are. You had to fight for space in your own family, let alone this world as a black woman coming in. And they tell you, come with that times 10. You're going to be who you be are who times 10. So I can see where like... You're not a sob story where you're, I have to pat her on the head. If anything, it's like, I'm the star of the show. I'm the star of the show. Bow down. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. She's trying to make you sit down. Yeah. So I could totally see that. And that yeah. that happens a lot in the industry. That happens in life in general. When you have the OG or you have somebody that's been doing something, they always want to make you feel like you're, you're the puppy. Be quiet. Yeah. But that's sad because didn't that happen to her and, and Naomi? That's why Naomi did that to her. Why would you then do that to somebody else? That's why it's so sad because your message and your actions do not don't match. Your message and your motives don't match. Right. You right. know what I mean? And that's just with everyone. A lot of people in this industry that I've seen, they don't, it don't match. Your message you are, and your motives don't match. Who you are on social media versus what you say versus who you are in the streets yeah. is completely different. Right. I've seen that on so many occasions right. with different people that I'm just like, bruh, I don't know who you are. Are we friends? Are we, are we cool? Right. Cause we're cool sometimes. Then the next day we see another event. Then we're not, I don't, are we cool? Right. I'm confused. Right. But Back to this. Well, the thing for me was, not only did they say BU times 10, but I'm trying to get on the show. Right, right. So I'm looking at all the other girls and what they're doing. And you understand it's TV. And I understand it's TV. And I understand that you have to stand out if you're going to be 13 out of, what, there were 50 girls there? Right. So I'm seeing what everybody's doing. And I'm seeing everyone do the same thing. And I'm seeing girls follow each other Mm. as far as what they're persona was going to be. Right, right. So I said, ain't nobody being, uh, ain't nobody be an individual right. over here. Right. Ain't nobody being unique up in here. Right. So I'm going to be, I have to be me. That's it. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I got on. Right. But her thing was, and I wasn't trying to overshadow her. I was 21 years old. Strong personalities. Yeah. You were, I guess, threatening in some mm-hmm. ways. Because I, I think I told you in the past, um, she had said, God, you look so much like another model, Eugenia. Oh, that bitch. Uh-huh. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Girl, it was like, Thanks. I was 22. This bitch remembered me. So after a whole, what? What is that? Girl, I was seven. Yeah. So... I Cycle seven to honored. twenty-two, y'all. Yeah, Bro. and I remembered you. I definitely remembered you. And I was like, "Oh, Eugene, I love her." And then she was like, "That bitch." I was like, <laughs> "I was so surprised because I thought she was gonna say something nice, like, oh, your face and you guys just have such a like, you know, you remind me of each other or something." But for her to say that, so like, I was like, "Oh, oh," <laughs> I was surprised. But um, crazy. well, that just showed you we're all human. We're all human. But my experience, if I should just just say, was. It was, it was, it was, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. And I'm, I'm glad. Thank God. You know, I, I, I still love her. I think she's an amazing person. She definitely, I, she, I definitely saw that there's TV Tyra and, you know, behind the scenes Tyra mm-hmm. for sure. But that's, that's with everybody. But that's what taught me like, okay, people are out here. They're not who they say, they're they're not who they say you are. And not, not in a negative, necessarily negative way, but you just, you just have to become a persona when you're in this industry. Mm-hmm. I'm my mate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I'm in, yeah. when I'm at work. Yeah. But when I'm not in front of the camera, I'm my mate. I'm chilling. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you know, people just be surprised that I'm not this, you know, on top, always wearing makeup, fabulous, uh, 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 what you think I should be. Yes. 
but I put it on, I turn it on when I'm in front of the camera. And that's one thing I did, I would say that I learned and I saw from Tyra, like, oh, y'all are different people out that here. That is but okay. what I learned. Yeah. But actually, you know what? I knew that already. Yeah. Um, I, it's just, you, you know, when you're doing what you're supposed to do because right. of who you are, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Because for me, I was like, okay, so when the t- camera comes on, you got to turn on. This is, you got to make people laugh. You got to make people go, oh, you got you know, it just, it it's was, TV at the end of the day. Yeah. And it was logical to me. Like if I'm playing this game, this is how you play, you know? So I understand like, yes, you have to turn it, but Tyra, I'm cutting myself off. Yes, you have to learn to turn it on. But I will agree with you and say that top model literally, if anything, it it taught me how to turn it on That's and it. give the people what they want. That's it. That's one thing, too, I would mm-hmm. say I walked away with. So from that experience, how, what was life like afterward? What were some things that happened that like really like okay, wow, I'm doing this. Because then you started modeling. You were out here for three years before you went to Cape Town. What was that like, that in-between time before you left to Cape Town? Uh, with my, with modeling, with my job? Modeling, yeah. Oh, modeling is always good for me. Um, when I, when I got off the show, the first job I ever did was a South Pole campaign with uh, Mario. I'll say that all the time, the singer. Yeah, and it turned out to Mario? Be, mm, the okay. singer. Yeah, and it turned out to be, it was like a billboard in Times Square. Ooh. It was all the, it was all these ads and all the newspapers and the magazines. Like, it was a big deal, you amazing, know what I mean? It was amazing. in the stores. I will say that because I didn't know about rates, I think I got paid three thousand dollars for all of that. I did not know about rates, and I didn't have an agency no. yet. I booked that myself. Oh, I see, I see, I see. All of my big jobs in my life, right. I booked myself. Wow! Did they come? The brands come to you directly? Yes, it was Curtis Davis. Curtis Davis was a stylist for South Pole, and he saw me on the show, wow. and uh, he called me. I don't know how they got my number. I think they called the network, and right. the network gave me their my number and yeah he called me and he said you know we want to shoot you for South Pole amazing yeah it was cool look at that but three thousand dollars girl I was in store I was cutouts Uh -uh. I was mailers I was a whole billboard in Times Square I was in all the magazines girl three thousand dollars if you know anything (laughs) about the industry listen don't get don't get robbed because you will have people that will rob you. Yeah, that's a twenty thousand jo- dollars job. Exactly, least. I was about to say a job like that at least at least twenty k. I mean, you're everywhere was- and for a long time yeah. with a celebrity freaking co-star or whatever. And I heard they were paying him like a hundred. Of course they are. You know what I mean? Oh, they got us. They crazy. got a steal. They gave you yeah. Oh, they yeah. gave you his lunch money. That was lunch money. Oh, that was no. pretty young. That's messed up. But <sighs> lesson learned. You know Not another mean? tick. Another lesson yes. learned. Okay. So that was my first job. So I'm wow. like, that's. I mean, that's a cool. That's what an amazing first job yeah, that's too. A cool first job. Girl. But girl, they they. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. And after that, I moved to LA yeah. and I did Fashion Week and I was working all the time and that was that. It was great. It was always great. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So you worked a lot of sh- fashion shows and then did a lot of commercials. Amazing. I did a lot of commercials. So Top Model, I will say it 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 seasoned me for TV. So Good. so when I got out and I was going to auditions and stuff for commercials, we've been on the fucking TV for two months. Right. So you already knew how to turn it on, what to say, how to get in the door, yeah. what set you apart from other girls. Yeah. Bam, bam, boom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I love that's it. what it did help I me. love it. And like, um, after that, when uh, wh- how was Cape Town? Where did you go after that? After Cape Town, I gained 15 pounds, so I had to come back to LA and lose the weight. I lost the weight. Ooh, the food in Cape Town is God. delicious. I lived there for three months too. I think around the same age, I was like 25 and I was like, I'm leaving LA. Yeah. And I had only been in LA for like two years mm. at the point. And I was like, mm. I'm done. I thought I wasn't gonna come back. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> so I know Cape Town, yeah. amazing food. So here you are, 15 pounds heavier. Yeah, came, came to back, LA, lost the weight, and then I went to New York after that. Okay. And I lived in New York. And how was modeling out there? Modeling out there was hard. Yeah. It was tough. It was the fashion capital at the time. Of course. So I mean, I came from California. I didn't get the memo about wearing black all the time. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't get the memo about being an asshole all the time. It took me about six, seven months to get acclimated to that. Um, but I feel like for me, man, New York is where I decided to be whoever the fuck I wanted to be. Like I came out of whatever shell I thought I had in New York. Like I had the time of my life there. I met my lifelong friend 
friends there. Um, I learned so much about life. I, I lived in Harlem the whole time. So I say like Harlem actually raised me, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I, uh, New York was a time. I definitely grew up. It was a time. I New York definitely will grew up teach there. you a lot. New York yeah. is different, and I'm I'm really sad that I didn't give New York enough of a a chance, enough of time, enough time there. Yeah, you I needed wish to I give had. it time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I feel like I spent just a couple crew months. And you'll find, and then you'll find people, and you'll maneuver. But I will say, New York, man, it was bittersweet for me because I was damaged after that relationship. Mm. So I. W- the agreement that I made with myself after I finally got out of that relationship, yeah. the agree- and I was so hurt and damaged and betrayed, and like I didn't understand what my role is in life as a woman um, in dealing with men because it's been so bad. And um, what I saw on the movies was different than what I experienced. So I was just confused. So for me, I made the agreement with myself and my soul. Because I that one about to happen again. Right. So I was like, I'm emotionally unavailable. I'm emotionally unavailable. Girl, before I even knew what that was, I was just like, I don't have emotions for nobody. So, and, and I was like, this man-woman thing, this boyfriend-girlfriend married wife thing, it's a scam. Mm-hmm. If that's what it is, mm-hmm. then it's a whole it's a scam. scam. I don't want it. And I was like, I figured it out early. Thank God. So all these people walking out here doing these relationship shits, like you're, you're, you're fooling yourself. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, any guys who are talking about, I like you and I want to be with you. And I was like, it's a lie. It's a lie. Cause this man would, um, so I'm sure like putting up those walls now oh, yeah. in New York probably was very protective. I mean, it was protective. It was protecting you. It was Mm -hmm. because I was a little crazy. And if I didn't have those walls up, I would have done some crazy things. But I did. I'm like, you you probably do need a little bit of a wall in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe God. But how does that finally come down? Um, I had to realize that after not being in a relationship for six years, an actual relationship, I had a bunch of situationships that I wouldn't let do nothing. Mm -hmm. I let these hoes simmer Mm -hmm. for years. Mm Nobody was getting close to me because I was like, it's a lie. Men do not like women. And I'm not going to allow myself to be in a relationship with a man who doesn't like women. And you guys don't like us. So I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. And I wouldn't, didn't trust myself to get out either because it took me seven years. Right, right, So I was right. like, let me just, not even enter into that shit. You just didn't want to repeat. I didn't want to repeat. And for me, I realized, I said, men are only good for fucking and raising a family. That's all they want to do is just fuck and have a family. So I said, um, okay, well, that's what we're going to do. Damn. <laughs> she said fucking and raising a family. That's it. They don't like us. That's so if you want some D or you want to, you're ready to have kids. That's what, yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to have a family with none of these people. So, um, I wasn't out here. I didn't have a whole face, but it was very much so like, yeah, we could, we could fuck if you want to. Right. But anything else, don't come at me with no relationship shit because now you're betraying me. You're not a real friend because now I know that you're trying to like trap me in my life. So I um, I went to New York free, but also in bondage, emotional bondage. That's deep. Yeah. Ooh. That's some real shit. Yeah, because I, I will say that I missed out on a lot of great experiences yeah, with men. Because you were so bad. Man, oh hurt hurt yeah so i had to realize that the way i was acting did not lend to what i wanted right and how do i turn down every single man that comes in my life if i want to get married right. so i had to go away and dig deep within myself and like find man i forgot i made how that did agreement. you dig deep like how did you dig deep how did you finally let those walls down and say i want better or i want more and like what made you finally say like because you've always wanted kids right yeah. and like a husband yeah. so how do you turn that off finally um how did i get it back um yeah. I had to go, I went to Atlanta for a year and a half, one, to create a company, and two, to... Yes, you had hair care line. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that shit. That was a whole, uh, that was, that was an experience. That was my first experience creating a business. I created it from the bottom up by myself. I had no mentor, no nothing. Not to say that was smart, but I just didn't have access to that because I created it in Atlanta. I didn't know anybody. Right. Um... 
So I created it from the bottom up, and that was a hard experience. Yeah. But I learned everything I needed to learn about business. It and that you can do it again. Yeah, it failed because by the time I, I brought it to market, I didn't even have any money left to market it because I feel, I funded it all myself. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. So I just had to let that go. Yeah. But that was, I mean, I know everything I need to know now to go back into it. Amen. But spiritually, when I was away, I spent a lot of time by myself, and I had to... Man, just a lot of thinking. Like, think back, like, what happened to you? Because I buried all this stuff. And even the agreement that I made to be emotionally unavailable, mm-hmm. I made that. I locked that in my heart. I threw out the key. I forgot even I made that agreement. Mm-hmm. It came to me one day like, oh, wait a minute, that's why. You told yourself to yeah, be you emotionally to unavailable. Me. Right. And I was like, oh, that's what happened. See how much power there there is in that? Like yeah. an emotional pact that mm-hmm. you make with yourself, a spiritual pact yeah. that you made with yourself. It was a soul tie. Yeah. It was a soul tie. And I was serious about it. Mm. Ser- you had forgot you even, and it became you. It became me. Yeah. That was, that was law. Yeah. You know? Right. And um, I really had to, I sat with my, for a year and a half, I would just... Um, go in the woods and just sit and think and I would smoke and think and like kind of try time travel back in my psyche to unpack these things and this happened there and how do I feel about that and cry about this and cry about that and um, you know revisit this cry about that because I, I you were your own therapist yeah I had to therapize myself wow like that is so important too though mm-hmm. like if you don't did you ever consider going to therapy um, I did, but I guess I didn't think that it was possible. You know, we weren't really exposed yeah, to that. Yeah, no, we weren't. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm so asking because a lot of, a lot of people, especially black people, we don't, we didn't grow up thinking that it was available. It was available. Yeah. Even when it was. And like, I mean, there's just such a stigma and a divide between the medical, you know, with, yeah. with black people in the first place. So trust me. Yeah. But, um, to sit there and understand the importance of going back yeah. to really unpack everything that happened up until that point to see how did I get here? Mm-hmm. What hurt me? How did I feel about it? What like what then manifested from it? What I say about it? What you I know, think what, about what, it? Yeah. And for you to have done that by yourself yeah. is just so like I commend you because a lot of people don't take the time to do that. And I think yeah. we're finally entering a, a, a time in our society where, and a culture yeah. in our society where it's finally cool to talk about your feelings. Yeah. It's finally cool to really dive deep and get into and get in there. And, and therapy's cool too yeah. now, right? Yeah. Like, let's unpack our shit. Yeah. Let's stop being toxic ass adults. Mm-hmm. Let's stop with the, oh, it, you know, it's because I was raised this way or I saw my mom hit my dad, so I'm gonna oh, let men God. just mess me up. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, enough with the excuses yeah. we're done with the excuses yeah. how can i now become a whole complete adult mm-hmm. that can pass on real like wholeness real. to to my children mm-hmm. without the trauma yeah. and the pain yeah. and the strife and everything that we've been through i'm trying to break generational yeah. curses here yeah. i'm done repeating the same cycle over and over and over and over mm-hmm. so i'm so happy that you said that you went yeah. into the woods you were really looking at yourself top down what happened mm-hmm. so how, how what was that process for you and then like so the process for me the process for me is I spent this whole that whole year and a half alone, kind of locked up in a room yeah. in um, Fairburn, Georgia. And again, like I will go out into the woods in the middle of the day or in the in the morning and take a walk and just talk to God and talk to myself and just smoke because you know I smoke and it mm-hmm. it opens um, a realm up for me yeah. that I can get more in touch with myself oh, yeah. and with God and I talk to God. Cause that's how we communicate, but <laughs> but um, yeah. Or I would take long drives, like I would drive to like Florida, or I would drive to Alabama and wow. just be. That's a meditation. Yeah, yeah. Quiet and getting downloads and listening and just listening, mm-hmm. and my higher self would talk to me. Mm-hmm. She's crazy. Mm, wow. <laughs> She's great. Well, we can get into that. Yeah, I can't wait to be here. Well, I am That's her. That's amazing. But like, right to, to live yeah. up to her. Yeah, she's so cool. Girl. So she would talk to me and and like she would just talk to me and give me answers and tell me things and give me advice wow. and. Mm-hmm. How do you reach her? 
She comes to me. I have to be quiet though. Okay. Um, when you quiet yourself down, she can communicate yeah, with you. She comes through. Does she want you to be her? Are you she's, her? You she's, are her. She can't wait. You are her. Yeah, I am her. But, but you have she's to become like, her. Yeah, but she's like, but I'm a little sharper than you, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you need to get where I'm at. Catch up. Catch up. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. Ooh. Our higher selves, man. Mm -hmm. If yeah, only we could make them proud. She's crazy. You know? Yeah, I can't wait. Wow. But, you will. Um, you will. Yeah. But um, this is what I had to do. Yeah. I had to create new intentions in my life for everything. Yeah. I had to create new intentions about love. What were my intentions in love? Because my intentions used to be to hurt these people. Right. Girl, everybody was going to pay right. for what the hell I've been through, right. you know? Um, but I had to set new intentions for love and what love meant in my life. I had to set new intentions for how I wanted to have relationships with men. I had to create new intentions about how I wanted men to show up in my life and how I was going to receive that. You know, I had to create new intentions about how I was going to have my friendships and what type of friend I was and what I wanted out of friendships. I just had to create new intentions in my life based on who Eugenia Washington, the woman is, and not... Um, the young girl that was raised by Lundia and Eugene Washington, who inherited, you know, all of their power, but all of their pain as well, you know, and still have the remnants of their um, abusive relationship. And I learned about love through them. And so now I have that understanding. And I had to cut all of that off and say, okay, as Eugenia Washington, yeah, who am I? and recognize that I have the power to create who I am and what I want and um, how I feel. Mm -hmm. And um, after I did that, then, and, and also I had to change me a lot. Right. I, had, I had to uh, be more open. I don't like to say soft, because that's not it. It's right, right. open. It's open, I yeah. Had to be more open. Good, good. And I love that distinction. Yeah. It's not about being soft. If you're that type of woman that, yeah. you know, is strong and a leader. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not about nothing wrong with that. It's, it's not about being soft. It's about being open. Amen. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So that's what I had to do. And I also had to make myself feel okay with being open and also expressing myself. Um, because I wasn't going to tell no guy I liked him. Right. I wasn't going to do none of that. <laughs> you wasn't I'm gonna, gonna you're not gonna know how I feel. I'll so know how you that. feel and I'll maneuver you around my life, but you're not gonna know how, know how I feel. Mm -hmm. And how dare I like a man because I know what I know about them, quote unquote. And what I know about them ain't shit. So like I'm deceiving myself if I go and like one of them. Do you understand? So I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis. <laughs> so I was fucked up. So I had to really unpack all that and just be a new person and just yeah. be open. Yeah. And then also I would like to say that. Refind even, yourself. Yes. Yeah. But here's the important part that even though we go through these uh, uh, cycles of self-discovery, yeah. we have to put those in practice. Yeah. Yeah. We have to put those in practice because you could think you about to be this type of girl, but then you get with the man and the whole man is a trigger. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So now and then you, you're unraveling again. So now you have to practice doing things differently. Yeah. You have to take things slow. You have to make new agreements. Right. And you have Set to put it in practice. Yeah. And you have to put it in practice. You have to practice it. And that's the hard part is actually being the person that you created. Yeah. Real. <laughs> actually put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Like we learned so much. We're listening to all these, you know, podcasts <laughs> we're reading all these books we're seeing all this content on instagram about this that that and it's all good and dandy to learn but are you applying what you're learning in your life are you becoming this person that you want to be mm -hmm. what steps are you making in your life to really level up to move up in life mm -hmm. I struggle with that so much Yeah. where like, you know, I'm reading what three books, mm -hmm. self-improvement, yeah. this, that, that, you know, and they're all amazing. But like, I, I think I finally had to come to just to prove your point. Like I really have to check myself on what good is this if I'm not actually applying what I'm learning yeah. to my life and actually becoming the person that I know I can be. Yeah. And then I, and then 
to live up to my potential. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to repeat, like I said, I do not want to repeat the same cycles over and over and over because that is actually the definition of insanity. Listen, don't, I don't want to hear learn nothing else. Let you me feel learn, me? Let me learn something at the next level. I don't need to learn shit else right here. Right, I'm done with this level. I am done with this level. I'm trying to level up. How do I level up? Mm. So it's all cool to read these books and da 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 da, but how can I really apply that to my life to then level up? And I'm still working on it but here we are today talking about how we can and it starts here yeah you're doing it we're, we're doing it and doing podcast amen amen we you see doing podcast. we're you know doing it. it we're doing it little by little step by step you know wait let me stop you this is a huge step it's can a, we no 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 oh. can we acknowledge it's a let's, huge step let's acknowledge that too that we are here filming the first episode of your podcast. You are doing it. Amen. We're you know doing what I mean? it. And You're I think doing it. To to back, piggy off of that, it's just like we also don't take time to to acknowledge our growth. Hey girl, we here. We have to acknowledge our growth and acknowledge, you know, what what you've been through to get you where you are. And it's okay to be, because my struggle is I think for so long I was trying to be who I thought I should be because of what people thought I should be. And it's like, but who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's such a loaded question, but mm -hmm. we are still figuring it out, child. But you, it's, I think it's just like, do you have the courage to be it? Do you have the courage to be it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, to, uh, <laughs> I just want to move on to how you became Playmate of the Year 2016. You were probably the last to be announced by Hugh Hefner himself. Yeah. And um, how was that like? Because I see you, you know, on your Instagram, you're so like... You're just an amazing person. You communicate your thoughts so well and like you're you're just so beautiful to watch. Thank you. <laughs> but you really have some good shit to say. If you haven't, I mean, you've heard it, y'all. By this point in the conversation, you know what I'm talking about. You be talking your shit. <laughs> How did you become so sexually empowered? God! And so like comfortable in your own skin where like, and you had the series on, on, on IGTV. It's coming back. Where you please bring back it back. Hard. Please bring it back. Because back I used hard. to love seeing you pop Thank up you. talking about your relationships. I mean, we've talked about it the whole time, but like what made you so confident in talking about um, that? And what made you so sexually empowered? Because I feel like you are very much that person. Yeah. And I could learn a lot from that. Thanks. Ooh, you have to come on the show. Yes. Oh, please. Um, sexually empowered. That was all rebellion. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. It was all rebellion. Um. Oh, let's see. What? What? Mm. <laughs> Just a, let's see. Let's see. What There's was so it? much to talk about what here. What was it? That was all rebellion. But I think it's always been in me. I think it has been. I think so. Okay, so when I got titties, I was in 12th grade. <laughs> you were in 12th grade? I was in 12th grade when I finally got a little titty. You were a late bloomer, you say? I was a late bloomer. I, I finally got a little titty in 12th grade, right? So I bought myself a push-up bra. And, <laughs> and so then I started wearing just kind of low-cut shirts. You know, just to give a little cleavage, or I would like wear a blouse with a shirt under it, but then the top two would be open. So, like, cleavage at the top, blouse. That's the type of shit I off. did. I don't know. It was just, I've been skinny my whole entire life. And as soon as I got a little bit of, mm -mm, a little bit of titty, a little bit of, then I was like, let me just wear what I wanna wear. It just came out. It's just how it was. And then my boyfriend, no, no, that's not the word. That fuck nigga I was with. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. That fuck boy. Yeah, that okay. fuck nigga I was with what for a long with him? time. He used to um he used to call me he would he, he's what was it, a floozy? Some stupid island shit. He's from Guyana, so some dumb island shit. <laughs> like a floozy or something like that. Because I um would I wish, I mean, if I showed a little shoulder, this nigga had something to say. So, you know what I mean? And I like to dress. I, my mom was always a dresser and I just got my style from my mom. And so, and I'm a girly girl. And also I like pretty shit. 
So, and I like looking pretty. I've always been a mega beauty girl, always, since high school. So that's my thing. <laughs> and I love style. I, I'm, I am who I am, you feel me? <laughs> so I'm with this nigga, and um, we're going out with my friends, and I'm wearing like my little short dresses and stuff, and being cute, because I like to be cute. And he would just call me all kinds of stuff. And so when I got to New York, I was out here. <laughs> I was doing me, and I was doing me. And the sexual part about it, it came from feeling like, um, like you wanted to own it, or how were you driven by it? By. Like, did it give you power? Did you feel I, empowered? I, I'm just a sexy person. I like sexy things. I like the vibe of it. My vibe is just very sexy. It's just I like how it feels. Yeah. Um, I just like how it feels. I like sexy shit. You know what I mean? I just do. To embrace it and just own it and just yeah. like emanate it. It's and it's not forced. It's not like sleazy. It's just, it just is. It's what I, I think that's so beautiful. I love my body. I love my body. I, me and her. I amen, love, you amen. know what I mean? And you can communicate with it and you can express with yes. it. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. What, yeah. And I'm an athlete as well. Like I was an athlete in high school, you know, all growing up. So I'm very connected to my body. You know, I love my body and I don't have no problem walking around, being in it, showing it, making it beautiful, making it sexy. Like I just love sexy shit. Amen. So I'm sure that helped in your career as a model then yeah. and acting and just being comfortable because a lot of the times, especially in our field, modeling, at least, um, a lot of people, women, uh, people that aren't comfortable with their bodies, mm -hmm. you it, you can see it. Yeah. And it's it for a long time, like it was so weird to me. Like, how do you not like understand how your body's moving? It it's still kind of weird to me, to be honest. But I'm just like, it's so interesting how there's such a disconnect. Like, you really have to learn to love yourself through and through, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it, for it all to connect and sync, so that you can then have like power. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's tough when though. there's a disconnect. Yeah. And, and it's tough. I, no, I hear you. It's I hear tough. You. I'm sorry. But it is so beautiful when you see someone who's like. And I know it's not, you're not perfect. And, you know, it's always a, a revolving door of like uh, working on yourself. Yeah. But it's so beautiful when, when you do see someone who's just in sync with all of it. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I just, um, I like my body, man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, girl. <laughs> you're amazing. And so last little question I wanted to ask you was, where do you see... Where do you see yourself going? Like, what do you want to accomplish? Uh, what are you working on? Um, it's a three-part question, I but know. feel free to tackle it however. Yeah, <laughs> so um, In Bed with Eugenia is coming back out. Yay! And we're gonna do it in my new and improved bed. I love my bed. I love it. Thank you, yeah, it's like, I love my bed. It's like this canopy, like romantic, sexy ass shit. So you were like doing, redoing your whole room. Yeah! Turned into a boudoir. Yeah! Okay, like <laughs> look at your sexy vibe, okay? <laughs> it just feels good to me. Yeah. So, um, um, so it will be, uh, another show based on relationships and sex and, uh, women's sexuality and... I could see that being on a network. Yeah. Yeah. So, Is that something you'd be interested in or... I mean, yes, if it comes around. Having fun with it right now. Yeah, having yeah. fun with it right now. Mm -hmm. So it's just... And when I first did it, it was just me. Yeah. And I kind of did that because I was hurt out of a relationship. And I was like, let me just talk about this stuff because now I'm able to. Now I'm free. I can finally talk about relationships. But now it's like, now I have more of an insight. Now I have... Um, I'm just, I'm just older now. I'm older than I was in the beginning of the year. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. I'm older than I was at the beginning of the year. So I, ha I, I have some more experiences under my belt. I have some new outlooks on it. And I, uh, I'm more of that bitch now. Yes. So yes. <laughs> I have more. So we're going to be talking from that place. From that place. And I have more, I have better things to say. And I also want to invite my friends in so we can talk about yes, our experiences yes. as women and I sexual love beings and relationships and kind of just um, really talk real talk. Yeah, yeah. Not on some, if a nigga, if yeah. a nigga fucking you and he not paying your bills, like that is Not stupid. on some city girl shit. 
<laughs> and hey, you know, more power to you. Or that's whatever. your vibe. But, but uh, that's dumb. Yeah, like, honestly. So we're gonna talk out. about real stuff. Okay, yeah. I love it. Real I love it. relationship stuff. That's healing. Yeah. yeah. Not 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 this self deprecating Yeah, this is not Twitter or a rap song. Yeah, no. This no. is real life. And you know what? Mm. To ooh. On that note, like I'm just like, can we not I love the the like going back to the sexual empoweredness or if that's a word, you know what I mean? Like empowerment of women right now that's going on, you know, WAP, talk your shit. I love it. I love it. I love a Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B showing all of it. But the only thing I will say is like, ooh, for a 14 year old, if I'm, I'm, I'm 29 years old. Mm -hmm. If I was 14 growing up in this era, I don't know what I would do. So my hats go off to the young girls right now who are really just trying to find themselves in this whole world and thinking like, fuck a nigga. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're not paying your bills, you ain't got it. It's just like, yo, no, like. Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because I just don't want to steer them too wrong where it's like you're 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 some fuck girl too. Where like you only expect to have sex with a man for something. Why you don't got your shit together? Yeah. Have your shit first. Have your shit first. And that's one thing. That's the only thing I'll say about that because I love it. I honestly love it. I'm just saying like, but, but have your shit together because Cardi, Megan, all these women that are, you know, at the forefront of like this whole A and city girls, you know what I'm saying? Like they have millions of dollars. They have their lives figured out in some way, shape or form. Money doesn't mean you're, you're whole. No, by no means. But I'm saying they're not 14 years old. Right. So when they're talking about, you know, wet ass pussy and they're out here in these streets doing whatever they want to do, they're not a 14, 16, 15 year old girl who doesn't have her head on together. So I'm just trying to say like, young girls, take it with a grain of salt, figure yourself out. You do not have to be having sex out here all willy nilly for a bag. They're talking grown woman talk. They're talking grown woman talk. If you're a grown woman, do your shit. Do what you need to do. Yeah, but, you don't but know about that. under 18, please. You don't know nothing about that. Relax. Because I'm seeing a lot of it happen. That's the only reason why I wanted to say something. I'm seeing a lot of it happen on Instagram. I'm seeing 14 year olds that, I, that look like stepmothers. <laughs> and I'm like, That's yo. Real. Relax. That's real. Relax. And now I get it because when I was 14 and I was wearing them big hoop earrings, my, my sister was like, take it off. I'm like, why? You hating on me. I get it. She didn't want me to grow up too fast. Yeah. Because I wanted to be so grown. And now I finally get it. Yeah. Ooh, child. <laughs> but what else? What are you working on? Um, That, um, okay. In Bed with Eugenia is coming out. I'm working on a skincare line that's actually was supposed to come out this year, but it's coming Woo-hoo! out next year because I'm changing the whole formula. Yeah, I'm changing the whole formula. It started out on one thing okay. and I, um, I, it's going to be something different. Amen. It's okay. going to be something different. Okay. So, um, I want to make sure that when it does come out, it's, it's, uh, it's special. Yeah. 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 yeah I love it. Um, that's, and I'm working on a couple of business. I don't kind of, I kind of don't want to say it. Don't, don't. Okay. Please don't. I, but you'll see me and I, I have Listen, you gonna see it. We gonna see, see it. it. We'll business. see it. I okay. See Cause I always, always feel awkward too when people ask. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm a type of person where I don't like to talk about shit until it's done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, not just that, but like spiritually and all yeah. that stuff, you never know what people can do or yeah. like what eyes they can put on you. Uh-huh. So I totally understand. Yeah. Only share what you want to yeah, share. Don't feel the need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are gonna see it basically. But I know personally that yeah. she's working on some amazing shit. Yeah. And when it comes out, y'all gonna be blown away. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. This is awesome. You were amazing as always. Thank you. And I'm just so happy that you came on. Um, you're my first guest. Yay! And I'm just so happy that I brought it in with you. Thank you so, so much. Thank this you was, so much. This was Gina. awesome. This was great talking to you. And I can't wait to see more and hear more. Yay! Thank you guys for listening to episode two of Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'll be back um, hopefully every week. 
<laughs> and so you can catch the YouTube uh, video, which will be on my channel, Mommy J channel. And obviously you can listen to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everywhere. Um, we'll be giving you more ASAP. So thank you guys for listening.